Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Hey y'all, welcome back to another video. I'm just coming to y'all because we're gonna discuss this Insecure episode, episode two, season four. We're gonna talk about some things that I ain't never heard before, like mayonnaise on fries, booty buttons. Um, so we're gonna begin the scene with Molly and Asian Bay coming out of a restaurant, coming from a date, which is good because Asian Bay has had to put up with a lot of mess for Molly, okay? If we go all the way back to Coachella days, Asian Bay done been through the ringer with Molly. He also got a call on his phone from work. Remember in my last episode, episode one review, Please go back to watch it if you have not seen that because we got down and dirty in the conversation there too. That I was wondering, what did Asian Bay do for a living? Okay, so now we're just gonna skip to the scene where Issa and Kodolo are checking out the venue space for the block party, which is a really cool space. There's still a little bit more awkwardness between them, but Issa does a really good job in like kind of taking the lead in this relationship and kind of being the one that's breaking the ice, breaking the tension, doing what she needs to do to make sure that they're cool. So this is the first time we've really seen Issa take the lead on anything in terms of with her friends. Because when she's with Molly or Kelly or Tiffany, they're always the ones taking the lead. Issa's always kind of like playing the back burner or she's just being a sidekick type friend. She's not really ever the leader of the wolf pack. But this is the thing. Issa and Condola get to talking about Lawrence, right? And they're they just like laughing about this man eating mayonnaise with his fries and just like going down like kind of memory lane with him. And I was just like, okay, uh, okay. I was like, okay, well that was a good way to break the ice and kind of just move on with the conversation. My only worry is I don't want Issa and Condola to get too dependent on the topic of Lawrence when they're having conversation. Like if it starts to become a regular thing where they're always talking about Lawrence, whenever they're together, it's gonna start being like a little bit like, okay, what, what, now what else can we talk about? The Halloween scene exposed a little bit about Molly and Issa um, and how they kind of been too busy to talk lately. Issa was the only one that didn't know about what had been going on with Molly and Asia Bay. Like, why is she out of the loop? Why is nobody, why is Molly not hitting her up, telling us stuff, when she's telling everybody else stuff? Like, what's that all about? So Molly decides that she really wants to start to get to know Asian Bay, and she wants to slow down on being intimate with him because we just found out that they've only been going hard with each other for about a month. And, and now they're intimate. And we saw in the opening scene where he did the, the, yeah, hey, I'm, I had to mention at some point in time in this video, but yeah, that was, I want to shed some light on how Issa's been kind of using Molly's uh, little proverbs, her little, her little, her little sayings and statements kind of like a little bit against her. Cause you know how Molly in episode one, she was talking about, if you don't serve me, I'm going to let it go. Right? Remember she said that? And in this episode doing that Halloween scene, Issa was like, well, if it don't serve you, let it go. You know, type of, type of tease, type of situation. What do y'all think about Lawrence? pulling up on Issa to confront her about conversation had between her and Cadola. I personally think that if he had a problem with it, he should have definitely talked to Condola about it. And we still don't even know what Condola and Lawrence's title is in terms of their relationship. Are they boyfriend and girlfriend? Are they just talking? They going on, you know, like what are they? Cause he needs to talk to her about that and not Issa. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Like, y'all get me? I didn't really think too much of the interaction that they had at outside her place. He was like, oh, you got a nice place. Meaning he ain't never been over there. So this is his, like, this is probably his first time seeing her in a very long time. And the first time he had seen her in a very long time, 
He's talking about keep my name out your mouth. <laughs> I think Lawrence is a Lawrence is a little weirded out by the two of them talking about him, and he's starting to feel like, wait a minute, I'm not the, I'm not the joke. Cause Chad was like, they gonna start binding and making a podcast about your your situation down there, and I'm like, yo, that's a good point, cause. Oh, uh, women would do that. This is one of my favorite scenes in this episode is when Issa and uh, Condola was having their little work, get together their little work dinner or lunch or whatever. Um, and then I noticed Issa had said something about Schoolboy Q being a headliner and Condola was like, thanks, like I didn't even, I didn't even never heard of him and he's gonna be a great headliner. I'm like, girl, ain't y'all in California? How you don't know about Schoolboy Q? That's like not knowing about Kendrick or uh, Dre or somebody or Snoop. Condola's been getting Issa hip to a lot of stuff, like sponsors, e event planning, all that kind of stuff. And then Issa's contributing the way that she knows how to with her musical taste. You know, as we can see, Insecure soundtrack is fire, is bomb. Like every song is good on the show that they play. So Issa, the character, is like, let me get you hip to my musical my musical taste, what's gonna make this event pop even more. So hold on y'all, we finna get to the scene where I was like, oh. So Molly pulls up to the restaurant and Kadoza, like, okay, I'm finna head out, bye, I'm finna, I'm finna head out. But Molly grabbed that girl purse, handed it to her, I was about to actually put that mug on her shoulder if she could. I thought that was so funny. It's like, Aren't you hungry? Like, you can stay. You can stay and eat with us. Like, that's fine. Like, come kick it with us. We about to eat. You might as well eat with us. And mommy was like, oh, hold up, girl. We were supposed to be together. I had some stuff to tell you. And I don't know this girl, which is so understandable because Molly wanted to talk to Issa alone. As you can tell, they ain't really been spending a lot of time together after, after what she said at the Halloween party. And she kind of the one to like have a little one-on-one -on -one with Issa. But Issa was like, girl, I ain't trying to... I want Condola. That's my girl. Like, at this point, I'm feeling like Issa's like, Condola is her girl. Because she's telling her to stay with her other girl. Molly's like, why well, I got to be friends with her just because you friends with her? Why I got to break bread with the girl that's getting broke off with your man? Like... I don't want to do that. Like, that was a little inconsiderate. I personally believe of Issa just to invite um, Condola to stay with them during during that time because Condola, Issa had that little one-on-one. -on -one. Now it was Molly's turn. Issa booked that busy honey with her friends. Like she got them lined up. She got the 7.30 with Condola. Now she has the 8.30 with Molly, but she's kind of starting to mix the business with pleasure a little bit. And Molly, she's not liking it. If Molly was looking like a third wheel, I don't care what nobody say. Yeah, let's uh, let's go to this headache of a scene when Molly is cooking for Asian Bay because she wants to have a more low key romantic night so she can be able to talk to him on the one on one, you know, deeper level, deeper connection. This girl choose to cook something that she don't even know how to cook. You done made it three times and you and it still came out salty. You want to impress your guy who coming over and you want to cook for him? Cook that one meal that you know that you can cook and you can kill it every single time. And he'll be like, ooh, girl, you put your foot in that. My, my meal that I like to do that with, I could really, I could really throw down on a lot of stuff, but I like to like the salmon and you know with the spinach and the homemade mashed potatoes and throw in. I don't want to make y'all, uh, cause then y'all start asking me for a tutorial on how to cook it. So then Molly and Asian Bay Drew get to sit at the table and they're talking and she's sharing her like Disney story, which is cute. You know, and then she starts to ask him about himself and some of his memories and all that kind of stuff. And he's just like, you know, I kind of don't want to get into that. So today, her response to him being like, nah, I ain't trying to talk to, talk to you about that. I ain't really trying to go into it. She was just like, you don't open up to me. You don't open up to me. You don't open up to me. We need to open up. We need to open up. How, when you say that to somebody who already ain't opened up to you, that's not gonna get them to open up to you, Molly. Like, that's the wrong way to go about 
it. You have to give him his time to really like trust you so he can feel comfortable in talking to you. You cannot force this man to tell you his life story when he hardly even knows you. Y'all been together for a month. He doesn't trust you all the way. Of course, he really likes you, but he doesn't trust you all the way, Molly. You can't get offended by that. People, people, some people's stories are really, really near and dear to them, and they don't just go around telling everybody who asks them about it, about it. <sighs> Molly, you making my head hurt, girl. My head hurts. My head hurts with this whole situation that you got with Asian Bay. It's a whole lot. And so she gets looking real lonely, child. She's just sitting real sad. And she calls, oh, she calls Issa. But before she calls Issa, we see Issa sitting outside the venue where she's gonna be checking out some music potentials with Condola. And she gets a text from Condola, right? Soon she looks at her phone, she's like, Condola. You know, she gets so excited when she sees that Condola's on her way, texting her, like, and so that triggered her to call Lawrence, though, and be like, Lawrence, does Condola know that you came over my house the other day to discuss something about me? Would you tell me to keep my name out your mouth and your name on my mouth and all that kind of stuff? And then, da, 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 she needed, and Condola need to get to know me first. And he was like, nah, I don't tell her. Nah, don't tell her. Like, now Lawrence is kind of like, girl, no, don't tell her. Just that's our little secret. That's just between the two of us. That's between the two of us. Ooh. <laughs> Issa then goes inside of the venue to go see the, the guy. I think she's just like went in and just was like, okay, she'll catch up with Condola later. Like, once she gets inside. And Issa... I just, I'm looking at her and she's there by herself, but she's having a great time by herself, enjoying the music by herself, just living in the moment. If you haven't been somewhere by yourself, go. So as she's enjoying the music, bopping, hey, oh, bopping, bopping, bopping. She get a phone call, ring, 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 ring. She look down, she like, oh, yeah. <laughs> she calling me, you know? And it was Molly calling her. So she declines the call and she sent she sent that custom text message being like, yo, I'm somewhere loud. I'ma call you when I leave. Issa didn't call her when she left. So Molly is like lonely. Uh, Issa living her life and Molly's lonely. Cause even at her job, like, first of all, the dude that be giving her all that BS, he's getting on my nerves. Like, leave her alone. You know, the stuff that happened, happened with y'all and just leave it alone, dude. Like you steady trying to comfort her every, every chance you get. And she just been trying to be nice to you. And he got a problem with her being nice to him. And uh, ugh. He giving me real SDE energy, okay? I'm just gonna say he's giving me very SDE energy. So, we get to the final scene of the episode where Issa and Molly are hiking um, up a mountain, a hill. And I thought that scene and that situation was very symbolic because we see Issa and Molly going uphill. You know, they're going uphill. It's a hard battle. It's, it's, it's um, a little tiring. And I think that's symbolic for their friendship. Like, they just been on an uphill hike an uphill battle for the past few episodes even a few seasons like, molly's just like girl i wanted to talk to you about andrew because i wanted him to open up with me and he didn't open up with me and i don't know i don't know i don't know and he's like girl nothing <laughs> and molly like no what 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 Okay, you can't say, girl, uh, never mind, nothing, and not make somebody want to know what you was going to say. Issa wanted her to keep asking her, like, what you going to say, what you going to say, what you going to say? Because when you say nothing, you make people more curious to see what you, what you was about to say. Am I wrong or right? Am I wrong or am I right? 
So eventually, Molly got it out of Issa. And Issa was like, girl, you always trying to find something wrong. I feel like you just don't like being happy. Like, I feel like you just like being unhappy. Molly was like, she felt some type of way. But that's how Issa felt when you told her her life was a mess. She hit you with a you. Molly gets a phone call to her surprise. It's Andrew, and he's calling... Oh, he was sitting like he had a nighttime, and they was hiking in the morning time, so I'm like, where he at? But anyway, <laughs> that's me being nosy. Like, where he at? Where he at? It's nighttime over there. I don't know where he at. So then, Molly goes back up to Issa. Issa's like, who was that? Who was that? Who was that calling you? Molly was like, girl, that was just work. All right, y'all. She's starting to lie to us. She's starting to lie to her. She's starting not to tell the truth. And I think Molly didn't say who was calling her because she had already just talked to Issa about a problem with him. And Issa was said what she said. And Molly's like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tell you nothing else. You just said I like being unhappy. So I'm not gonna talk to you about him no more because I'm just not. You already taking his side when it comes to stuff, girl. I'm just gonna let this relationship be between me and Asian Bay, and that's what Molly did. She told a lie. She didn't tell her what he tell her what was really talked about on that phone call, and Issa was like, "Oh, okay," not, not thinking nothing of it, and probably not even caring, honestly. So Issa was like, "Girl, yeah, I'm done. I'm done with TSA Bay. He got two kids and one on the way." I'm just like. Issa, what? Nah. Can we really talk about this scene with Issa and TSA Bay and him saying that he want her to touch his booty button? Have y'all ever... I, I ain't gonna ask y'all that. But booty button? Booty button. Booty button. Button of booty. So yeah, that was the episode. That was my review of this episode. Um, it's a lot of drama going on between mainly Issa and Molly. Um, and I'm not too sure how this next episode is gonna pan out. This episode was a little, sh it was a little short to me. They all 30 minutes, but this one was like extremely short. It felt like 15 minutes, like. I'm like, dang, where's the commercials when you need it to make it feel like it's longer, child? Because I'm like, this needs to be longer. Thank y'all for watching and tuning in to watch my review of Season 4, Episode 2 of Insecure. And be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And also share the video if you feel like you know somebody who really wants to watch something like this. Bye!